talking about the things that matter most to you, Catholic Women Now. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Julie Nelson, joined by Emily Schmidt as my co-host today. Good morning, Julie. It's good to see you, Emily. Good to see you, too. It's great to be back together in the studio. I know last week you were not feeling great to come in, but thank goodness for modern technology, you could join us from home. Who knew Zoom? Just how wonderful it is. I know, I know. It's just like one of those things that technology used for the kingdom, right? Amen. Yes, yes. Well, I'm excited about our guest. Guests today in studio I am too. here. Um, Very we, excited. We have Teresa Welch, who is the executive de- director of Intervisions Healthcare, and then we have Sarah Herm. Sarah is the guest speaker for the upcoming Intervisions Annual Gala, which is June 2nd. Sarah has a very powerful so- story of um, finding herself um, a single mom, pregnant, choosing to take the abortion reversal pill, regretting it, and then finding help, hope and all that. And I'm not going to give a lot away because Sarah really has the beautiful story from her heart. And I just want you all to stay and listen in because you don't want to miss this. No, not at all. I'm really excited to hear Sarah tell her story. What I know of it so far, it's pretty amazing. It's a very amazing story. God reigns, right? Yes, he does. Yes, Praise yes. God. Well, let's entrust this next half hour to the Blessed Mother. Absolutely. So Mary, the Immaculate Heart of Mary, we entrust this time to you as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Eucharistic miracles of the world display can be viewed at Christ the King Parish on Des Moines' south side from May 3rd through May 24th. And Iowa Catholic Radio welcomes Scott McCreary with special guest Ali Colleen at the Iowa Event Center Ballroom on Sunday, July 24th. Tickets and information are available at CelebrateCountry.org. We have many events happening here at Iowa Catholic Radio. You can check out those events at iowacatholicradio.com. Also, I want to mention that we have a wonderful Iowa Catholic Radio app where all the shows are ca- uh, kept in podcasts. So if you can't listen live, you can always go and listen on your own time, which I have done many times, and I do appreciate that app. It's free. My mom loves it because now that I'm on the radio, she can't always hear me at live so then she goes on the app later and watches it are, are or we, listens to it sorry no, uh, good it. old moms right i know, you know they they're keep, right there in our corner <laughs> they love you so much my 86 year old mom will try to get it on her um alexa oh yeah, alexa I can you do and, that yes is that possible it well is. that's good to yes, know yes 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 so i'm learning it, something new today right right <laughs> she's learning that too i'm really impressed with her 86 years old you know mastering that <laughs> So anyway, so we're excited today. Um, we have in studio guests here, Sarah Herm and Teresa Welch. Sarah, welcome to uh, uh, Catholic Woman Now. Thank you for having me. And Teresa. Thank you so much. I cannot believe we were talking ahead of time. We've not had you on yet, Teresa, and that's I my, my I'm bad. Excited. No, yeah. I'm excited to be here. Teresa is the Executive Director of Intervisions Healthcare, and Sarah is going to be the keynote speaker at the Intervisions Gala June 2nd, telling your story. But before we go into the story from you, Sarah, you have a beautiful endeavor you're doing. You wrote a book called yes. Finding Hope. Yes, and mm-hmm. it's in publication now. Mm-hmm. So Teresa would like to read her your entry from this book to kind of start us out here. <clears throat> this is an um, entry that Sarah wrote uh, in her journal, um, and this was Sarah it was <clears throat> excuse me the night that you took the first you found yes. out you're pregnant went to Pelham Heritage took the first abortion pill correct yes okay so this was on May 24th of 2018 my little one I am so sorry. To me, you were an alive, perfect little creation, and I wanted to hold you so much. I know I had a choice in this, but your father didn't want to have a baby in this messy life of mine. I pray God forgives me for this because I don't know if I ever will. I pray Mary welcomes you and watches over you. Mommy loves you so much, and I am so sorry. I will think of you daily and hope to one day meet you in heaven. I am sorry, little one. I love you. I will love you always. Mama. P.S. The process is one pill today and 24 to 72 hours later, another four. Baby, what if I just don't take the other four? Do you think God can help save this? Save you? I will do my best, baby. I will do what I can. 
Wow. That is really heartfelt. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. very heartfelt. <laughs> Sarah, you know, you were in this situation and you wrote this. And after you wrote that, how did you feel? I mean, were you feeling some relief, some hope? What? I was feeling a little better. Um, very uncertain about everything. Um, this was before I had gone and picked up my other children and I was still trying to talk myself through this and be like, okay, a lot of women do this. Like, they're okay. I'll be okay. Let's just kind of see how things go. We'll see how tonight goes. We'll see how tomorrow goes. I was kind of just in like this waiting game at this point. Mm-hmm. You have three other children, right? Correct. Yes, yes. So you took it, in, it took it and they went off to school and then you were sitting there by yourself all day with this all hanging in your mind, in your heart. Yes. I had that day off. I went to a job interview and then I had the appointment at Planned Parenthood. Um, It was around 11 or so. Um, And so then I still had some time after I was at that appointment to go home, cry it out, think about what I was doing. um, And that's when I wrote that. That's so beautiful. When you're in in those words, I just hear um, the lies that can come into our mind. When yeah. you were saying how you're trying to rationalize it, or like other people have done this, why can't I do that? Mm-hmm. What a lie, right? Yes, it most definitely was a lie. Um, it, it, I think it kind of goes along with what a lot of women feel when they come into intervisions is they're believing the lies that other people have told them about what they can do, and they're not relying on themselves and the Lord to kind of carry them through. So... After this, then, um, what did you do after this? Did you seek some help in trying to reverse this then? I uh, waited until the next morning. Um, the kids, once I had picked up the kids, they kind of made it harder for me to rationalize what I was doing. Right. Um, like, I, I was really hard for me to look in my children's face because I was like, oh, there's another face forming right now. <laughs> right. Um, oh, yeah. And so it was the next morning that I called the hotline that I found that the night before when I was just kind of like, well, what happens if you don't take the rest of the regimen? What if you just kind of wait it out? Can you reverse it? Um, and that's where I found the hotline. And then the next morning I ended up calling when I panicked that the first pill was already working, you doing feel, what it was supposed yeah. to do, I mm-hmm, guess. Mm-hmm. Well, we're going to um, pick up on that and more to come here. Um, we're talking with Sarah Herm. Um, she's sharing her story of an outcome of taking the abortion reversal pill, and she's the keynote speaker at the Intervisions Gala, June 2nd. You're listening to Catholic Women Now on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network. Thought of the Day with Monsignor Frank Bagnano. In the 5th century before Christ, the great Greek philosophers had an inscription over the doors of their schools and it read, Know Thyself. How do I come to know myself? It's only through relating to other people. A baby learns that he or she is a person because he or she is loved and valued. To know the deepest, most truthful realities about myself, I must come to know and be known by my loving God, my Creator, by Jesus who took on a human nature to relate to me. Knowing that God loves me personally helps me to know who I really am. I am God's child, destined to grow in love of God and of others in this life and to spend a joyous destiny with Him forever in heaven. Yes, like the Greek students, know thyself. That happens as we grow each day in giving and receiving love from God and from others. And that is today's thought of the day. Honey, I'm so excited for our kitchen remodel. All right, you love birds, floors. Natural hardwood. Okay. Wow, that was quick. Countertops. Definitely natural granite. Check. Woohoo! And that wall. Tear it down. It let in more natural sunlight. Done. Whoa. Speaking of tearing down walls, your family planning. Natural, right? Natural family planning is 99% effective at achieving or delaying pregnancy. And there are no harmful chemicals. So it's better for you and the environment. Tear down the wall. A message from Iowa Catholic Radio. Hello, this is Steve Ray. Join me in Iowa Catholic Radio on the journey of a lifetime with a Footprints of God pilgrimage to the Holy Land. November 11th through the 20th, 2023. We'll visit the places where our Lord performed miracles, including the Mount of Transfiguration, the wedding church in Cana, Tabga, where Jesus multiplied the loaves and fish, and of course, the Holy Sepulchre. The scriptures will come alive as I offer expert teaching along the way like I always do. Visit iowacatholicradio.com for all the details. (laughs) 
Welcome back to Catholic Women Now here on Iowa Catholic Radio. I'm Julie Nelson, joined with Emily Schmidt, my co-host, and we're speaking with Sarah Hearn. She is sharing her story about um, the outcome of taking an abortion reversal pill and then having regret the next day. And you found on the abortion reversal hotline a number to call here in this area. Yes, I did. Good morning, you. Yeah, it was a... Just a hotline website, and it looked like at the time it was based in California, so I was super unsure about it being from Iowa. And I called, and they answered right away, and they told me there was a local doctor who was practicing it, offering it, and I was able to go in that day, um, that morning, and see him, and we were able to kind of discuss the options of starting the reversal process. I think it's important, Teresa, for people to know what this process is like when people are choosing a medical abortion? Right, yeah. Um, when a woman goes to um, the abortion clinic, they um, they give them the first pill and they have to take that at home, or excuse me, at, at there before they leave the, the clinic. And what it is, is it's a pill that pro- that blocks the progesterone. Progesterone is needed to be able to sustain the pregnancy. And um, so then they take, take the other pills in a brown paper bag and they take those home and they do this the second part of the abortion um, at home by themselves. And um, that what that does is it... Um, it dilates the cervix, and the baby is um, expelled like it would be during delivery. But it's done by yourself um, in your bathroom. And um, if anyone has seen the movie Unplanned, that scene where Abby Johnson has done that is exactly what happens. It's very traumatic. It's very traumatic. Mm-hmm. It's so sad to think of women doing this by themselves, right. especially mm-hmm. when you hear women empowerment and like women sticking together in these situations when then now we're sending these women home alone. Right. Mm-hmm. And they're, they already feel alone. Yeah. You know, they walk mm-hmm. into our clinic yeah. feeling alone mm-hmm. and then you send them home alone to continue this process. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah. Sarah, I'm sure that was what's going through your mind. You're feeling alone, but now you have some hope. So what was the options then when you went to see the doctor? Um, we did an ultrasound. They wanted to verify, you know, that the baby hadn't passed already. Um, so I, was told there was no promises because the heartbeat wasn't as strong as he was kind of hoping. Um, But he said there was enough of a heartbeat that he was confident in at least trying. And I told him, I didn't need promises. I just wanted some hope that I could reverse what I had started. And what did you, do you, did you get that hope? I did. Okay. I did. Like when you went home then to your other children, like with that hope, how did that change your day from like where you were feeling in the morning to after that experience? Well, it was even uh, the hope started as soon as I walked into it was Vitae where okay. I went for this yeah. at the time. And I mean, Dr. McKernan and even his assistant were very welcoming. His assistant held my youngest at the time, my third child, because she was sleeping. Yeah. And she was they were just there for me in a way that Planned Parenthood was not there for me. And so I I just knew I wasn't alone. They saw Vite saw me as a person and they really wanted to like help me in my darkest hour. Um, and so, I mean, just knowing they were on my side, I felt a lot better. Um, and then like going home and just looking at my kids like, okay, we, we can kind of, we might be able to do this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the, the hope started at Vite and it's continued since. That's so beautiful. You've ha- you've conquered many fears through yes. all this. Yes, you know, you've had, <laughs> like I can see several fears: the fear of oh, what have I done? What have I lost? The fear of being alone, and now you're conquering a fear of oh, I hope this baby's going to be okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, and honestly, through it all, like the only person who was there through it all, I mean, was God. Like at the time, yeah. I remember, like, where are you? Like, why aren't you here? Um, but even in the book, I kind of do like a reflection back looking at all of the journal entries that I wrote to the baby. Cause that's what the bulk of the book is. Um, I just have realized how much God was there, mm-hmm. um, and how much he's guiding you, how much your journey is woven for a purpose. Um, even when you can't find it as you're going through your day to day. I am thinking of Psalm 71. It says, you are my hope, Lord, my trust God from my youth. And your story just, that came to mind as I was listening to your story. It's not only your hope, but from our youth, from your baby's like earliest Mm -hmm. moments, he's, God was his, um, your baby's hope. Mm -hmm. And so 
now how old is this baby that you've had? Well, his name is Isaiah. Sorry, I spoiled the no, ending that you, the baby is alive you're, and well. <laughs> you're fine. And his name is Isaiah, oh, which oh. I think is very fitting. Um, and he's three. And how, <clears throat> excuse me, how has he... How has he been, um, how has he really affected your family? I say affected, I mean more like, how has he been a, a really big influence in your family? What has he brought to your family through his life? Um, I mean, he's brought hope to life yeah. in general for me and my family. Um, he's also brought a devotion to mm. our lady and our Lord and Savior. Um, he was kind of the catalyst for a huge faith journey for me. Um, Mm -hmm. and kind of just like surrendering to whatever God has planned and like going through the consequences of my actions, but like trying to find God in those moments and like making it for a reason. Um, but I mean, my family, we've, I mean, we're just so close. Like, I don't, I can't even (laughs) really explain it. I mean, we are just so close. Um, he's a spitfire. Um, he's definitely (laughs) a personality, but I mean, he's, he's brought a lot of joy. That's so beautiful to hear. A God is so amazing when he brings life into situations. And, you, you know, the world is telling, was telling you, you know, this is going to be the ruination. This is going to be too much for your life. And look what happened. You know, the, the, it's such a beautiful gift of joy in your family. And, you're, and it, it's not a burden. Correct. Right? You know, Isaiah is a joy. Yes. There's no, you know, he's just added so much. Yes. He's added a lot of personality to our family. <laughs> So your faith life before this happened, were you, did you pray? Did you go to church? Or yeah, re- I went to, I, you know, I did the, the obligation of going to church every mm-hmm. Sunday. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was kind of it. Um, and like I prayed throughout the day, but I don't think I believed the prayers and I don't think I yeah. actually believed like I was a child of God. Um, and now I just, I know he's working everything out like anymore now. I'm like, well, God. You've obviously got a purpose for this thing to be going on right now. Mm -hmm. And so, like, it's just finding the strength to continue in that prayer life um, and realizing that sometimes when things are going wrong, like, it's not God always testing you. It's it's the other side trying to pull you away from God. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. so, like, it's you really need to just kind of know everywhere God has brought you out of and that he really only wants what's best for you. But at the same time, that dark side wants you as well. So mm-hmm. it's it, it's not always worth blaming God for. It's buckling down in God and continuing. You know, I just so was list, listening to a talk on um, overcoming fear the other day. And one of the things this priest said is that, you know, trusting, which is I hear a great yeah. deal of deep trust now in the Lord from you in this situation for, through what you've been. But it takes courage to trust. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we just think, God, help me to trust you. Like it's an action on our part, just give us grace or something. But it's an act of courage. And I hear that in your story. You made an act of courage, uh, holy courage, mm-hmm. uh, 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 supernatural courage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, the trust has been tremendous. And so now in the little things, you know he's there, right? Yeah. And I, honestly, that's what brings us, I guess, to Inner Visions is I reached out to them. Um, actually, we got connected for a scholarship. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But I mean, even now, just being able to help at Intervision so I can maybe try and help other women one day know. I want to hear more about that. Um, we have to take a little break. This is Catholic Women Now on Iowa Catholic Radio speaking with Sarah Herms. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio provided by Mercy College of Health Sciences, where you can chart your course for more. Mercy College provides unparalleled clinical rotations, hands-on learning, accelerated education, and flexible schedules. Since 1899, Mercy College has been transforming students into healthcare professionals. Guided by Catholic values, our faculty put classroom theory into practice. Students are prepared for roles in service and leadership throughout their own careers. Learn more at mchs.edu. Mercy College of Health Sciences. mchs.edu. Iowa Catholic Radio welcomes Scotty McCreary with special guest Allie Colleen. Give myself five moments. Sunday, July 24th at the Iowa Event Center Ballroom. I'm in between. Friday night, wild and quiet Sunday Tickets and information available at celebratecountry.org. 
sponsored by Ball Team. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Catholic Women Now provided in part by Permar Security, providing security solutions for homes and businesses since 1953. Permar Security is a Catholic-owned family business supplying security systems, access control systems, video surveillance, fire alarm systems, and video doorbells. All alarm systems are monitored out of their monitoring center located in the state of Iowa. Permar Security, 515-244-5660, permarsecurity.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio provided by Knights of Columbus Borman and Pfeiffer Agency. Serving the Catholic families in Iowa, the Knights of Columbus is a fraternal benefit society providing financial security to members and their families. Specializing in life insurance, long-term care insurance, disability income insurance, and retirement annuities. You can reach Knights of Columbus Field Agent Gregory Waddle at 563-689-6801. That's 563-689-6801. Thank you and God bless. Welcome back to Catholic Women Now here on Iowa Catholic Radio. I'm Julie Nelson, and we're speaking with Teresa Welch, Executive Director of InterVisions, and Sarah Herm, the InterVisions Gala speaker, sharing her story of choosing an abortion reversal, medical abortion reversal pill, and then changing her mind, finding hope through the hotline, the abortion reversal hotline, being led to Dr. McKernan, um, went through the reversal, and now you have a beautiful baby boy, Isaiah. And we also like to hear how InterVisions, Teresa, has helped Sarah on her journey and where she is today. Yeah. Um, so Heartbeat International had a program, um, has a program that helps women who have had unplanned pregnancies that have chosen life to help pay for their um, college tuition. So after Isaiah was born, Sarah went back to school and got her massage therapy license. And so she obviously had student loans to pay off. And um, Dr. McKernan, through us, um, we... Um, um, nominate her to have this award and have this um, this award given to her so she could pay off her student loans. So I happened to have a position available at the time, and I put it you know out to our our donor base, and she applied for a position. And but looking at the hours that she needed and the hours we needed, it, we knew it wasn't going to work. But consequently, at that time, we got um, notification. Ashley Bratcher, um, who played um, Abby Johnson in Unplanned, contacted me and said, "You know, we have someone that you nominated that is going to be able to get the scholarship." And her name is Sarah Herm. I'm like, why does that name sound familiar? And so I went through and I'm like, I think it's somebody who applied. And it was. So, yes, I lied. I called her and invited <laughs> her in for a, an interview. Um, and so one blizzardy day, um, Ashley Bratchard flew into Des Moines. And um, Sarah came in thinking she was coming in for an interview and walked into the Southside Clinic in the conference room. And there was Ashley Bratcher with a check wow. to pay off her student loans. Yeah. It was wow. a lot. So, and then I apologized oh, to her for lying. <laughs> I told her, I'm sorry, we don't have the hours that you need. <laughs> we got something better. We have something better. <laughs> so now you're in school. I Well, I'm done with school. Okay. I'm now a massage therapist. Great. So, yeah. Mother like, hours, too. Yes, right? yes. I get to make my own schedule. I work at um, Genesis Birth and Massage. Okay. Um, it's just oh. a very small business owned by one gal. She, I got partnered with her, actually, through Brian at InterVisions. Um, That's amazing. And so... Yeah. So that, I, I think it's really beautiful how inner visions is just not about the baby, right. but it's yeah. the whole, 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 the woman empowering the woman. Right. We have to the, empower the woman to save the baby. Yes. So yes. it doesn't just stop, you know, when they choose life. I was reading a um, blog post by Destiny. She's the Feminist for Life director. And she was just talking and she just said, you know, a lot of women are scared right now in this country because of what could happen with Roe v. Wade being overturned. But she said, it's not the women, it's women who are pregnant, who are afraid they don't know, they don't, they don't have a place to go, but there are places to go. Mm -hmm. And that's what people need to know. There are places to go and we need to be ready as a community, as a faith community Mm -hmm. to support these women through organizations like InterVisions. Right. You know, with the, the whole possible overturning of Roe versus Wade, um, there are women who are still going to have unplanned pregnancies yeah. that are in crisis that want to have an abortion. They can get on the internet and they can look for the abortion pill and don't have to have a doctor at all. So they can get sent to their house, the pills. And um, so if they take that first pill and like Sarah change their mind, they're still going to need InterVisions to help them reverse that abortion. So um 
yeah, we're we're not going to go away. We're going to be needed mm-hmm. even more. Mm-hmm. So does InterVision do reversals We now? do. Okay. Mm-hmm. So. We started doing them um, in 2019 when we opened up the South Clinic. So Sarah, you know, had Dr. McKernan help her. And we occasionally at that time helped Dr. McKernan as well with those. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Sarah Herm, for joining us today. And she's got a book, Finding Hope, which will be available for sale at the InterVision Gala, June 2nd. Teresa, are there still tickets available? Oh, absolutely. We we hope everyone can come. We're so excited about this year. So excited. So you can get more information at the website, ivhcare.org. Thank you so much and keep up that beautiful work for the Lord. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you you so much. Well, let's close with prayer. In the name of the Father, Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Oh, Lord, we just lift up all those women today who are facing crisis, who feel so alone. Lord, we just ask you, rush in, send people to them, rush in with your love and through others that they know they can have, they can have hope, that there is, there are, is there a community of people here willing to help them and to guide them and to live the life that God has planned for them and for their child. And we ask the Lord Jesus to continue to shower us with your grace, your mercy, your love, and keep pointing us in the direction that you are leading us to help moms and to help babies and to reverse this terrible scourge on our society right now. And we ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is Catholic Women Now broadcasting from the Iowa Catholic Radio Network studio. Donations are always welcome at iowacatholicradio.com. And I just want to put a little plug in there, Immerses tonight. Yes, it uh, is. We talked about it last week on our show. It's at Holy Trinity. It's mm-hmm. a new venue at 630 Mass and then followed by Praise and Worship, Prayer Teams, and Reconciliation. So come out and get refreshed in the Holy Spirit. There'll be some great music. We'd love you to come and sing and praise along with us. Emily's our leader. <laughs> All right. Faith on Trial with Deacon Mike Mann and Gina Knoll is up next. And remember, God loves you and has an amazing plan for your life. Today's Catholic Women, on the voice for Catholic Women Now, Iowa Catholic Radio. Catholic Radio.